What if I told you that when I advance the slide like this, it actually also advances on another instance of ProPresenter 7 on a totally different computer? Well, let me show you. So I've got a picture in picture. The one that we were just looking at is the big one, and the other computer is the small one. So notice how I am advancing them both at the same time. Now I'm not pressing two buttons, I'm just pressing one button and it's advancing in both places. But unlike the master control module, if I wanted to advance it in just one place, I can. So I have even more control than I did with the master control module. So how am I doing that? Well, let's go back to ProPresenter here. Um, and I want to show you this piece of software that I was using for a totally different purpose. But And I've got to give credit to Brad Zimmerman for suggesting this. It will work perfectly for this. So I've got one of these. This is a Stream Deck. I'll leave a link below the video if you want to buy one of your own and help me out in the process. Doesn't cost you any more, but uh, it will help things out here. So this is a Stream Deck. It's a USB controller, and all of these buttons have um, programmable functions and all. But I'm not using the software that came with Stream Deck. I'm using different software. I'm using Companion. Now, Companion is free software, so I just went to bitfocus.io slash companion. That took me here. I clicked on the download button. It asked me to log in, and I logged in. Um, it's a free login. You can create one if you don't. Then I... From this downloads page, I went to 2.0 beta. So clicking there takes me to this page, just to save you some time. And I did uh, a find and search for ProPresenter. So this is the download that I downloaded. I'm on Mac, so I went with this one and installed that. And that takes you to a screen where you can open the... Uh, graphic user interface, which is this over here. So you will notice this is all on a web page. So the first thing you want to do when you get in here is click on Instances. Uh, you'll notice that I've got my ATEM Television Studio HD in here, and I've got two instances of ProPresenter. So what I did was I just did a search for ProPresenter and uh, if you click Add here, then um, it takes you to basically the same thing as this Edit screen. So I'm going to just show you that. Now, this is, notice this module communicates with Renewed Visions ProPresenter 6 or 7. So you could actually use this with an instance of 6 on one machine and an instance of 7 on another machine. So that's just a little bonus tip. This particular one is on this same machine, you know, you see it down here. So I just used the this same machine IP address 127.0.0.1 because that's always going to be the same. It's not going to change. Um, but if I go back to instances, you'll see on my 13-inch MacBook Pro, I have a different one. And since that's on a different machine, I put in the IP address of the different machine. I put in the port number. I'll show you where to get that. I put in the password. I'll show you where to get that here in just a second. So let me do that right now. If we go into ProPresenter and then Preferences, you're going to want to go to Network. Make sure you enable Network. Uh, the network name doesn't really matter right now, but this port number is the port number you want. There's uh, 
So in Pro 6, there was another port number for the stage display app. Don't worry about that. Pro 7, it just uses one. Also, you'll notice that there is a password for the controller. If there isn't one, put one in. It could be 1234 or 0001, you know, the pass word of my uh, luggage. So either way, you can put in whatever you want and uh, put that there. So keep those in mind. So I think this is the default one, actually. 65178 and control. So let's go back to um, companion. And notice that I put in port 65178. And for the password, I put in control, all lowercase. Uh, some of this other stuff might matter if you're doing other things. But all I'm doing is next thought slide and previous slide. So let's go to buttons, and I'll show you how I configured that. So you click on a button, you set the button type, and it needs to be regular button, and then um, key down on action. So when you press it, it sends this action. You could also do it for when you release the button. But in this case, I'm just going to do on, and let's do... Um, next. So now since I renamed these two I've got two instances where I can put next slide on there. So I can do that and now I can do the same thing again in EXT for the other one. So notice that it has both of these options that happen at the same time when you press the button. I could give it a name, next, all, if I wanted to. I also, in this case, this is the same function. So I just did all and then a greater than sign indicating it goes to the right. It's the next one. Did the same thing for here. But what I also did was I created one where it's just the new machine, which is the 16-inch MacBook Pro, or just the old machine. So I have full control over if I want both of them to advance, if I want just the 13-inch MacBook Pro to advance or go back, or the um, if I just want the um, previous one to. And since that all happens over the network, it's a really lightweight command that happens. It's virtually on the same time. So this gives you a couple of advantages. First, let me delete this old one. Um, yes, I want to delete that. So this gives you a couple of advantages. Normally, you might want to do it where it's the same thing, but maybe you have different backgrounds, um, both playing from the media layer. So let's say on this one, I wanted that background, and on the other one, I wanted a different background. Let's, uh, let me show you that. So we've got both of those, and now I can advance with two different backgrounds but the text is the same. And uh, the big one is full screen and the little one is lower third. That's a one use case where you might want to do that. Another use case might be that you have like four lines for your congregation, but you want to show two lines for your live stream for a lower third. Well, in this case, you could do all every time you want them both to change, and then just the one, whichever one that is, in this case it would be the old um, one, when you just wanted this other one to change. So that's another use case for that that you might run into. Now, you might be thinking, Paul, I don't have any extra budget 
for buying one of these stream decks. Well, let me show you something else that it can do. And so if we go over here back, there is this web buttons thing. So I can go to the appropriate page and I can just click on the appropriate one here in this page. So I'm going to actually move this. No, actually, let me do this. I'm going to uh, go ahead and switch back to the picture in picture. And I can click on those buttons. To advance it that way or just advance the one in the lower right hand corner just advance the top one and so on so I really have a lot of power here and I can do it all for free so until renewed vision adds back in the master control module this is the way that I'd recommend you do it I was going to create a tutorial on how to do it with MIDI, but that's a lot more work because adding in the MIDI note for each slide makes it more ungainly. But doing it this way, you have all the power plus more from the master control module that was in Pro 6, but now you have all that power in ProPresenter 7.